Hi guys, David here with another science update. So I don't know what it is about this week, but I keep on finding amazing papers. And I'm really excited about this paper that came out in Nature Metabolism just this week. It's called Fasting Drives the Metabolic, Molecular, and Geroprotective Effects of a Calorie-Restricted Diet in Mice. And that's a mouthful, of course, but basically what we're gonna get into is that there have been many studies that show that calorie restriction can extend the lifespan of mice. That's well known, and a lot of people have embarked upon calorie restriction diets for those reasons. In fact, there's, I remember seeing documentaries about these people who will eat like 1500 calories per day and they weigh like 90 pounds, but they're cool with it because they're gonna live to be 120 or something like that. But this study actually digs into it a little bit more and it looks at kind of a hidden variable that was present in many of the early studies that demonstrated the value of calorie restriction in terms of age or life extension for mice. Specifically, this hidden variable relates very closely to another type of popular diet, which is intermittent fasting or the more extreme form of uh, OMAD or one meal a day. And basically this is where people say, you know what, um, instead of focusing on just restricting calories, just eating less, I'm gonna focus on eating within a specific window of time. And there have been endless debates about whether intermittent fasting or eating one meal a day actually provides any benefit. Um, in and of itself, or if it's just kind of a behavioral modification approach that helps you eat fewer calories, right? Because the idea would be, if you only eat one meal a day, it's you, you just can't physically eat enough calories to get fat. So that will help you lose weight, just because you're just you just don't have the the time or the stomach space to fit all of the calories in in one meal. But this study will actually do a pretty good job of decoupling calorie restriction from the meal interval. So it says that CR, or calorie restriction, is the gold standard for geroprotective interventions, extending lifespan and health span in diverse organisms and preventing or delaying many age-associated diseases. In rodents, CR improves metabolic health and glucose homeostasis. As long-term adherence to a reduced calorie diet is difficult for many people, there is substantial interest in identifying the physiological and molecular mechanisms that mediate the beneficial effect, effects of a CR diet. That's exactly what we've been saying. You know, it's people, it's not really a nice lifestyle to always be in a calorie restricted state. And if you end up losing tons of weight and you lose muscle mass, your quality of life can really plummet from that. So, so people are motivated to try to understand, can we get some of these benefits without kind of the costs of having a long-term calorie restriction. The paper goes on to say that traditionally the beneficial effects of a CR diet or calorie restricted diet were believed to be the result of reduced caloric intake. Although recent studies suggest that reduction of specific macronutrients may also play a role. So, you know, people have been looking at, well, maybe if we reduce carbs, for instance, maybe that changes things. But it's recently been realized that these CR regimens, as typically imp implemented in the laboratory, not only restrict calories, but also impose a prolonged daily fast, as CR animals rapidly consume their entire daily meal within two hours and then fast for 22 hours until their next meal. So what's crazy is that the studies that um, have shown that calorie restriction is so beneficial actually also implement OMAD or one meal a day because typically if, if you follow any of the you know channels that, that practice OMAD for instance like YouTubers and whatnot uh, a typical OMAD regime or regimen is you usually have a two hour eating window and then 22 hour fast and that's exactly what the mice have been doing. Of course they've also had a calorie restriction so this study is going to try to decouple these things. So there were two phases of the study. In the first phase, they looked at um, four different groups, four different diet groups. And they had mice that were given AL, which is ad libitum, access to a normal rodent diet. And I, I think that means they can just eat whenever they feel like there's food present as much as they want. The second group was given a diluted ad libitum diet or diluted AL diet. And this was, again, they were, they were given access to as much food as they wanted, but the food was, was diluted 50% with indigestible cellulose. I think it would be kind of like being given as much food as you want, as long as the food was salad. And so this said, they, it ended up being 
um, based on how much they ate, it ended up being equivalent to a 30% restriction of calories, but without any fasting because they were eating it kind of throughout the day. Then we have the MFCR. This is meal fed calorie restricted mice were fed 30% less food than the ad libitum fed mice using an automatic feeder to release food in three equal portions during the 12 hour dark period. So they had meal feeding. It was kind of like they had three meals a day and then they, you know, then they had a space like a, maybe a 12 hour space where they weren't eating kind of similar to someone who ate, eats three meals a day and sleeps at night and maybe gets up in the morning and doesn't eat breakfast right away. And then they have the CR mice who are fed once per day in the morning. So they're doing OMAD or one meal a day and they have a 30% restriction. So you'll notice we don't have in this group, we don't have a um, fasting without calorie restriction group, but that comes later. So basically in this first trial, we have these four different diets and three of them have reduced calories um, but with different feeding patterns. So basically the diluted AL group, the MFCR group, and the CR group are all eating the same amount of calories, but the diluted AL group is eating them more or less continuously. The MFCR group are eating the calories in three meals, and then the CR group are eating the calories just one meal a day. And so these three different groups are kind of like, you could think of like grazing all day, having three meals a day or doing one meal a day, but all the same calories. Interestingly enough, they say that tracking the mice on each diet reg regimen, they found that all three dietary restriction regimens reduced weight gain, fat mass, and adipaticity, or, or fat content. But despite all three diets reducing calorie intake by 30%, there were clear differences between the effects of the diets. The CR fed mice, that's the one meal a day mice, gained more weight than mice fed the diluted AL diet or the, the meal fed diet. Additionally, all three groups initially lost lean or, or fat free mass to differing degrees, but the lean mass eventually rebounded in the one meal a day mice. So actually, um, in some ways that's that, that was good weight gain, which is that the lean mass rebounded in the one meal a day mice. Another thing they found out was that surprisingly we observed that insulin sensitivity was significantly improved only in mice fed the classic CR diet. That's the one basically like the one meal a day or the two hour feeding window and not in the diluted ad libitum fed or the meal fed calorie restricted fed mice. And so insulin sensitivity refers to how sensitive the body cells are in response to insulin. High insulin sensitive, sensitivity is good because it allows the cells of the body to use blood glucose more effectively, reducing blood sugar. And um, contrast to insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance is often, is typically associated with prediabetes and diabetes. And so if you, you know, generally speaking, insulin sensitivity going up is a good thing. Uh, but what's interesting is that um, it wasn't enough to have calorie restriction. You had to had you had to have also um, sort of a, a reduction in meal frequency and an extended or a prolonged fast period. It's it's really hard to overstate just how significant this research is going to be for a lot of people. I think in the intermittent fasting community because this really does seem to support a lot of the kind of conjecture and hunches that people have had for a long time. And by the way, this is probably a good time to say, um, though I've done intermittent fasting in the past and I might do it in the future, I'm not like a diehard um, one meal a day person or a diehard intermittent fasting person. I'm just uh, I'm just kind of interested in, in finding out the results of this and it may change my behavior, but I'm not really uh, entering this with um, a strong commitment to either point of view. I'm personally, I'm really interested in lifting weights and I, and I find that um, I have a hard time gaining weight on an intermittent fasting diet. Um, so, so I often like to keep my body weight up so I can lift more weights. So I, I'm personally not, I'm just saying this to point out that I'm not like a um, intermittent fasting guru or anything like that. Another really interesting thing that again sort of backs up some of the things that uh, the intermittent fasting and one meal a day people have been saying for a long time is they say distinct fuel source utilization and calorie restriction is driven by fasting. 
So the CR fed mice engage in rapid li lipogenesis, that's um, making of fatty acids, following refeeding. Then they sustain themselves via the utilization of these stored lipids. So they found this out, they placed mice in metabolic chambers, which allowed us to determine the substrate utilization, or, or what it is that they were breaking down in their body, by examining the respiratory exchange ratio, or RER. The RER is calculated from the ratio of oxygen consumed and CO2 produced. A value close to one indicates that carbohydrates are primarily utilized for energy production, while a value approaching 0.7 indicates that lipids are the predominant energy source. So they can tell by, by placing the mice in these chambers where they're measuring the CO2 and the oxygen, they can basically tell um, if the mice are breaking down carbs or if they're breaking down lipids or, or fats. Um, an RER greater than one reflects the utilization of carbohydrates for making lipogenesis or, or, or for making fatty acids. And so in other words, if you have an excess of carbohydrates, what, you're, what your body is gonna do is it's gonna take those carbs and it's gonna put them through some metabolic pathways and it's gonna build fatty acids or build up um, of fats, which will then be stored in your fat cells. So what they found was that the CR mice, or the, the, the one meal a day mice, they found that their RER rapidly rose above one following refeeding. So that means that right after they ate this huge meal, um, they started to make fatty acids because they had excess carbohydrates. And then that RER fell below 0.8 during the rest of the time indicating that they started to then burn the excess fatty acids, the lipids, um, for energy. And so they're actually, they went, they, they made a bunch of um, fat molecules and then they burned fat during the fasting period. And this was not the case for the mice that were kind of eating, that were able to eat all the time. They never got into this phase where they were burning fat. They also found that there were um, distinct molecular signatures associated with the different diets. And I'm not gonna get into this, but the link is provided below if you wanna read more about it yourself, but this is just a little bit more deep than I wanna go for this particular video. So up to this point in the study, we've basically talked about these four eating groups. There were the ad libitum who were able to eat as much as they wanted, whenever they wanted. And then there were three diets that had basically calorie restriction, but calorie restriction with different eating frequency. The thing that I was wondering as I was reading this was, well, what about the group that would represent that if, if I was doing intermittent fasting as someone who's, you know, um, enthusiastic about weightlifting, I don't want to lose, I don't really want to lose a lot of weight or anything like that. Where's the diet that would reflect me or my goals? So where's the diet that would try to have not a calorie restriction, but I want to see if I could get some of the benefits um, of long of a long fasting period. And so what they did was they decided to design a fifth feeding paradigm, which they called, called TRAL, in which mice were entrained to consume about the same quantity of food as the, the mice that were able to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted, but within a three hour period, followed by a fast for 21 hours. And what's really interesting is that it turned out that this group, the mice that were able to eat pretty much a normal diet uh, in terms of amount of calories, but restricted to a three hour period, had many of the same sort of properties as the group that was calorie restricted and was eating in a two hour period. So the classical CR fed mice versus this new group, which did not have the calorie restriction, but they were eating, you know, within a short window. And it found that both of these groups had reduced overall weight and fat mass gain during the 16 weeks of the study, despite the fact that the TR group was eating almost as many calories as the ad libitum fed group. Additionally, the TRAL fed mice, this is the group again, that's eating a normal amount of food, but within a short window, had improved glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity, just like the CR mice. So they utilized the metabolic chambers. Again, what they found is with this group, the CR mice and the TR mice both had this same sort of approach is that after refeeding, they started to make fatty acids. So the RER went above one. And then after that, 
they started to break down fats and started to run on fats because the RER went down below 0.8. And so they had the same basic uh, metabolic profile, even though the amount of food they ate was significantly more. Overall, it was really just of the five groups, it was only the groups that were eating the CR group, the calorie restriction group, and the TRAL group that showed improved insulin sensitivity. Together, these results demonstrate that fasting recapitulates the physiological response to calorie restriction and is both necessary and sufficient for the metabolic response to calorie restriction. So in other words, what they're saying is the, the benefit of calorie restriction, um, as, as indicated from past studies, seems to be only based on the fact that the, the calories are consumed in a, in a small window. And it doesn't really, um, it's, not, it's not the fact that there were less calories overall. In other words, the fact that mo in most of these calorie restriction studies, they were also having the mice practice OMAD or intermittent fasting was something that was basically overlooked. However, they found that calorie, that in, in mice where the calorie intake was reduced without fasting, this is, so remember, this is the ad libitum feeding of a low energy diet, or basically, as I put it, just eating salad all day. They did not show the anticipated reduction in age-related frailty and had reduced lifespan. So this is actually really depressing for some people. Um, I said earlier in the video that I remember seeing documentaries about people who, who looked at this research and they decided, you know what, I want to live a long time, so I'm going to eat a low calorie diet. I'm going to eat a lot of salads. I'm just going to eat like berries and like maybe some low fat yogurt with it. And, and these people were eating like 1000 to 1500 calories a day. And you had grown men who were like 95 pounds, but they were, they were happy because, you know, even though they had to wear a sweater in the summer, they were going to live a long time. But what this suggests is that it's not enough to just restrict calories. And if you restrict calories, but you have a normal eating pattern, it's likely that you will have a reduced lifespan, at least compared to the calorie restriction um, with intermittent fasting, which is pretty depressing when you think about it. And I feel really bad for the people who have been spending the last couple decades, you know, um, some of them just like, at a chronically low body weight in the hopes of, of living to like 150 or something like that, because I don't think it's going to happen. And then it says, not only is a fasting period necessary, but the imposition of a prolonged daily fast without reduced calories basically has the same metabolic benefits and the molecular effect of the classical calorie restricted diet. And then they have this figure here, which basically illustrates what they're trying to talk about. So they have in they have a mouse and then they put it the idea is if, if the same mouse went through different uh, different lifestyle then it would have a different effect and this one says restriction of calories without fasting you're gonna have a low lean mass low fatty acid oxidation your frailty score will go up and your lifespan will go down compared to daily fasting without calorie restriction so this mouse here that looks really tough and you know upright is going to maintain his lean mass. He's going to have good insulin sensitivity. He's going to be utilizing fat, fatty acids. His frailty score will go down. You can tell that because he's, you know, he's not bent over with a cane and his lifespan will go up. And so this is basically their conclusion. Um, they, they said there are some limitations to the study and uh, there's a lot more. This is like 33 page study. It's pretty in depth. Um, and, and I've included a link below, but this is, they, they found that the classic calorie restriction diet in mice, the benefits of it seem to be sufficiently accessed just by eating food in a small window of time. And it doesn't really have much to do with the total calories consumed. So they say, in conclusion, our work demonstrates that daily prolonged fasting has powerful health benefits and underlies many benefits of a calorie restricted diet in mice. And that while you are what you eat, it is equally true that you are when you eat. But man, this paper is a big deal. And I think it's going to get a lot of attention in the coming weeks and months. I'm really pleased to have been able to share it with you so soon after it was published. Um, and I hope you found it interesting. If you liked the video, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And I do really hope you'll join me again in the future soon. Bye.